Let's take a few moments to get to know the nominative case a little bit better. What I want to do right now is to look first at the nominative case in English and then from there go over to a discussion of the nominative case in German. Essentially they're the same thing. So let's look at the sentence you see on your screen. I am tired. And let's take it to take the sentence apart a little bit. We have the first person singular personal pronoun which is in the nominative case. Um, I, the subject of the sentence, the person who performs the action in the sentence, the person of primary interest in the sentence, the person who pulls all the strings in the sentence. This person, the subject, is in the nominative case. Now, this person exists, is doing something. So that brings us to the next word in the sentence, the verb, am, which is a first person singular verb, a conjugation form of to be. I am. Now, if I left it just as that, it would be a complete sentence. I am. Not very interesting, but nevertheless a sentence. What I want to do is I want to expand the sentence out a little bit, provide a little bit more information. And I'm going to do that by adding a predicate adjective. I am tired. Uh, I'm reporting on my condition. So if you want to look at it in, in, in a basic, most basic form, what you're saying is I equal tired. I am tired. I'm reporting on my condition. Now, nominative case can report on people's conditions. It's also the primary actor, the person who performs the action in a sentence. Um, but we could also talk about change of condition. So, I become tired. Or we could even talk about a lack of changing condition. So, I remain tired. All of these sentences, we have a subject in the nominative case, which again is the primary actor in the sentence, the person around whom the sentence hinges, the reason for me talking about this person, uh, the person who pulls all the strings, the actor. Uh, we have different verbs, am, become, and remain, and then we have the same predicate adjective, tired. But essentially what we're talking about is the condition, a changing condition, a condition that remains the same. Um, this is, in a nutshell, the nominative case. Now let's take a look at the same sentences in German. We have a first person singular personal pronoun, ich, again, in the nominative case. Now, we also have the verb, ich bin, first person singular verbs. We have subject verb agreement. And again, I could just leave it at that, ich bin, I am. That's kind of a boring sentence. So I want to expand it again by tacking on a predicate adjective. Ich bin müde. I am tired. So I'm reporting on my condition. I am the primary actor in the sentence. I am the person of primary interest. Uh, I'm the reason why the sentence exists. I am in the nominative case. All right? Now I'm reporting on a condition, so essentially what I'm saying is I equal tired, ich müde, and, but we could also look at change of condition as well. Ich bin müde, I am tired, ich werde müde, I become tired. Or, like we talked about before in looking at the English sentence, ich bleibe müde, I remain tired. In all these instances, the nominative case, the ich, the subject of the sentence, is in the nominative case. Why? Because ich is the primary actor. It's the person who would perform the action in a sentence if there were action here, but is the person around whom the sentence hinges. It's the primary person of interest, the person whose condition we are reporting. All of the verbs show 
condition or change of condition, which is another hint that it's going to be a nominative case. And then finally, we have a predicate adjective at the end of the sentence, which sort of wraps out, fleshes out the sentences as well. This person is tired. This person becomes tired. This person remains tired. Nominative case.